Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Mobile 5 Breakthrough Strategies to Capture and Convert the On-The-Go Car Shoppers. My name is Eliana Raggio and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. And for anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency. And we're best known for our search engine optimization, best-in-class customer service, and our award-winning websites. DealerOn was named the top-rated website provider by driving sales in 2012 and 2013, and DealerOn customers were winners of the Spring and Fall 2012 Digital Dealer Website Excellence Awards, including the highly coveted overall winner. And at NADA, DealerOn also received the Best in Show Award for Website Design from Dealer Marketing Magazine. DealerOn is so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that we're the only company in the industry to offer a money-back lead guarantee program. So, does your website company guarantee you leads? Well, then maybe you should check us out at DealerOn.com. And we have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Ben Anderson as our presenter today. Ben Anderson is the president of Automotion TV Dealer App, which develops innovative mobile marketing solutions for the automotive industry. He's responsible for leading, developing, and growing a company that leads in mobile app technology for the dealership market. Ben has received several awards for his innovative work, including the 2011 Minnesota Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award from the U.S. Small Business Administration, and the 2006 Regional Collegiate Entrepreneur from the Global Student Entrepreneur Awards, and the 2005 Student Entrepreneur of the Year Award from the University of St. Thomas. Ben Anderson speaks nationally on mobile and emerging technology, and he can be reached at ben at automotionweb.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we're going to respond by email to you later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of the webinar recording is also going to be emailed to you later today for your reference, and please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And guess what? Our good friends at Automotion TV are giving away a really cool prize today on the webinar. What is it? It's the new Apple TV with 1080 PhD. This device gives you access to the best content, blockbuster movies, TV shows, sports, your music, your photos, and much more, right on your widescreen TV. And you can even play content from your iOS device on your TV using AirPlay. It's a $99 value, and one lucky attendee is going to be scoring this totally cool prize today. But you have to be on the live broadcast to win it. All you have to do is stay tuned for the details after Ben's presentation. Also, at the conclusion of the webinar, you're going to receive a short survey, so please fill it out because we're always looking for great feedback from our audience, and today we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all the completed surveys to get some Google prizes. So let's get started. Let's learn the five breakthrough strategies to capture and convert on-the-go car shoppers. Ben Anderson, how are you today? Eliana, I'm doing really well. Thank you for that kind introduction. Ah, thank you so much. Now. Ben, when you and I discussed doing a webinar together, I knew I needed you on here because I, I really, in, in the automotive industry, I just don't think there's anything hotter right now than mobile. And mobile applications and mobile strategies are all the rage right now. People are trying to get on board. Some people haven't done it quite yet. But what we do know is that, A, dealers really need to be involved in mobile, and two, that maybe some dealers really need some help getting their mobile strategy up, running, and really, really strong. So that's why you're here today, right? That's why I'm here. <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. So as we jump into it, first I want to say hello to everyone on the webinar. Um, I'm really excited about mobile, and I think mobile is one of the most important topics for your store in 2013 uh, and beyond. And the whole goal of this webinar is to motivate you around mobile, to really get you excited about what possibilities exist from a sales and a service perspective uh, around mobile. So my goal today is we'll move through the material rather quickly, so stay with me. Uh, stay on cue. We'll get to the, to the material. And then the goal is towards the end, hopefully this will inspire some questions and some lively discussion around mobile. So let's jump into it. Uh, let's get started. First of all, mobile marketing, breaking through 
the noise. Um, I'm of the opinion that a lot of the traditional channels are now overcrowded. When I talk traditional, I talk uh, print marketing, I even talk Facebook or, or paid search, have so many of our competitors jumping on that bandwagon, hence the, uh, the picture I have listed here. Um, <laughs> At dealers who say, Ben, you know, Facebook just isn't effective for me, or paid search just doesn't seem to be effective for me. And I think the correct answer is Google paid search isn't effective for me now. Think about the marketers who found a channel like Google's paid search early in the process. They were able to effectively pay pennies on the dollar for top spots. And through a lot of their experimentation, they found a marketing channel that was undercrowded and provided true ROI. And I'm a big believer that innovative marketers need to try, make mistakes, and try again. We're truly pioneering right now with a lot of the emerging technology. And so I personally believe mobile is one of those new channels that can hold tremendous benefit. I'm a big believer that mobile is the future communication channel between the dealer and the customer. So let's get started. My goal here is to get you excited, like I said, and help you crush the competition. First of all, mobile is massive. Talking to you a year ago or two years ago, I would have spent the next 10 minutes or four slides convincing you that mobile is the oncoming tidal wave. I don't need to do that today. We know mobile is absolutely massive. So let's just spend one slide. Um, yes, mobile is here to stay. A couple of quick stats for you. Apple has over 18 billion app downloads. Android, over 6 billion. Both of the Apple and the Google's App Store combine for over one million apps, split about 50-50. And then note this Cisco study. This is a pretty recent study by Cisco that states that mobile app data tripled each of the last three years. Now, we just need to slow down and reread that statement. Cisco states that mobile app data tripled in each of the last three years just more information around just how fast this mobile revolution is moving. Let's now move into some data around mobile and smartphone usage. Quickly, some smartphone demographic information. As you can see, males and females are listed with green and blue, pretty close to 50-50. The medium age range is between the ages of 18 to 44 on this graph. Another data point for you, smartphone users earn more. This is data from Flurry Analytics, the leader in mobile app data, combined with U.S. Census Bureau. And it states the U.S. household average income at $44,000. Those with a smartphone, over $20,000 more on average per year from a household income perspective. Smartphone users earn more. Next is a really interesting study we're going to spend a minute here on from Nielsen. Nielsen compiled, uh, or composed the study, I should say, and they took 20,000 mobile subscribers. And the goal here was to identify smartphone penetration by age and by income. So let's start at the very top, the circles. Those represent individual income levels. I want you to start all the way to the right, top right, in the dark teal. These are individuals making over $100,000 per year, six-figure incomes, and there's some stats that shouldn't surprise us. I want you to move down to the age ranges. Let's take a look at the age ranges of 25 to 34, ages 35 to 44. If you're a high income earner and you're between the ages of 25 and 44, seven, eight out of ten times you're going to own a smartphone. Makes sense. Young, well off, you have a smartphone. Here's where it gets sort of interesting. Same income bracket, but let's go to ages of 55 to 64, typically an age range that's not quick to innovate or adopt new technology. Individuals making more than $100,000 per year are almost five out of 10 times likely to have a smartphone. Now, here's where it just blows my mind, and it gets absolutely crazy. Go up to our income levels, our income circle, circles, and go all the way left. In bright blue, individuals making less than $15,000 per year. Remember, the U.S. poverty line is just over 12000 Look at the age ranges of 18 to 24. Individuals making less than $15,000 per year, 56% own a smartphone. Mind-blowing statistics from Nielsen. And I think what this shows us is that smartphones are no longer a luxury. Smartphones are becoming 
a necessity. Same study. Same study by Nielsen. In the green, we have current mobile subscribers. In the blue, we have recent mobile acquirers. Let me define this. In the last three months, that means if you're a recent acquirer, you've changed cell phone plans, you've changed the actual cell phone device itself, you've made some type of change. And what this study wanted to figure out is those who made a change recently, how likely were they to choose a smartphone for their next phone purchase? Look at the age ranges of 18 to 24 and ages 25 to 34. In green, current subscribers, 62% and 66% already had a smartphone. However, for those who made a recent change in the last three months, eight out of ten times they chose to go with a smartphone. So just more data on the emerging trend, quote unquote, of smartphones and how it's absolutely becoming mainstream. Let's talk about mobile number two and its ability to cost your dealership opportunities. I call it the mobile problem facing dealers today. And I identify it as this. Talking to dealers across the nation, gathering data over the last two years, dealers would share with me what percentage of their total website traffic was coming from laptops and desktops, and what percentage of their total traffic was coming from mobile-based devices. And this will not be a surprise to many of you on this webinar, but dealers are reporting a substantial rise percentage-wise of mobile traffic coming from iPhones, Androids, and the like. What was interesting is about one year ago, that percentage of total traffic was maybe one, two, three percent of all total traffic was coming from these mobile-based devices, the rest coming from laptops and desktops. Today, that number's 10 percent, 15 percent, 20, or as much as one quarter of all of your total website traffic is coming from these mobile devices. Now, why did that matter? But well, we were able to segment down for these particular dealers and segment bounce rates by device type. Let's do a quick 411 on what a bounce rate is. Bounce rate very simply is when a customer or a visitor comes to your website, doesn't find what they're looking for, the website doesn't load, or some other problem exists, and they instantly navigate away. They visit the site, don't find what they're looking for, navigate away. Essentially a lost visitor. And so Getting back to bounce rates, for these dealers who did not have a mobile optimized strategy in place, we segmented the bounce rates for specifically mobile-based devices. We were finding some as high as 80% or double their laptop and desktop rates. So here's the mobile problem. For those dealers without a mobile optimized strategy who are spending thousands of dollars a month promoting their .com, their .com, their .com, driving these visitors to their websites, for those who do not have a mobile optimized strategy, they were losing as much as one quarter of all traffic to extremely high bounce rates. Truly a problem that didn't exist for us two years ago, but certainly requires our attention today. So Eliana, we come to our first polling of the audience. Your turn to interject. Uh, and Eliana, I'll let you take it from here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ben. Okay, so everyone in the audience, we have a very interactive presentation for you today, which requires, of course, your participation. So first poll question for you today is, have you checked your mobile website traffic recently? What percent of your total site traffic is coming from mobile? So please just select one of the following options. Is it less than 5%? Is it more like 5 to 10%? Maybe you fall in the range of 10 to 20%. Is it more than 20%? Or maybe you haven't checked it lately and you're just not sure. Whatever the answer is, we want to know, don't we, Ben? We do. We do. And just so I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate. If somebody is looking at their, um, their website analytics, let's say it's Google Analytics, there is a way to see which one is coming from mobile traffic, right? I mean, it's, it's in there somewhere, right? Absolutely. And at the end, too, if people have questions on how to check that, because maybe you're in the category of E, I haven't checked it, or I'm not sure. And remember, your responses are totally anonymous. Uh, but that's, that's an honest answer I find when giving talks across the nation to dealers. So at the end, we can certainly address that on different ways to check that stuff. Okay, so somebody write in that question to me so I can give you credit for it. <laughs> okay, well, now that we have 
Now that we have a majority of the people voting, I'm going to close this poll and share the results. Ben, 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 Ben. Let me just tell you, 50% of my audience today says that they're not sure. They're not sure how much of their total site traffic is coming from mobile. 50%. And I'm not surprised. Sure, interesting. Yep. But we, we do, out of the, the remaining 50%, we have 21% of today's audience said that they think they're getting somewhere between 10 and 20%, which, by the way, big piece of the pie, I think. 21% said between 10 and 20%. We have 14% of today's audience said they're getting more than 20%. 11% of today's audience said it's more like 5 to 10%. And we have 4% of today's audience say that they're getting less than 5% of their total site traffic coming from mobile. Does that sound right? Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, that really does mimic what we're seeing ar around the nation. Now, like I said before, doing this a year and a half ago or two years ago, we wouldn't have anything close to those stats. And guess what? In one year from today, those stats are going to be completely different, and they're trending upward you know, at a, a rapid pace. So yeah. my suggestion is take a look at that number, because that's really going to dictate how heavily you invest in mobile marketing. If you're in the category uh, of under 5%, maybe it's not your highest priority. Uh, if we're talking 25 or 30 percent of all of your traffic is coming from mobile devices, now is the time to absolutely pay attention. And I just want to give you a follow-up too. Sherry wrote in, and she said, "More importantly, shouldn't we be checking what percent of leads are coming from mobile?" But I'm sure you're going to get to that, aren't you, Ben? <laughs> the, 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 the lead thing we'll save to the very end because it's a very interesting dynamic when we have two different types of customers, at least in, in the way in which they're interfacing with the dealership on the go and versus in front of their home uh, at their desk or in their laptops. We can certainly get that to the end, but very good question, very good question. Thank you, Sherry. Okay, Ben, where we go from here? Let's go to number three here. As we move on, three mobile must-haves. I'm going to cover today mobile websites, I'm going to cover QR codes, and then finally I'm going to share some data around mobile apps as well. First off, mobile websites. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, and the reason is a lot of, the, uh, of those in the webinar today probably already have a mobile website. Um, if you do, I want to confirm with you that you are making a fantastic decision. From the data that we see, the data that I shared with you in the beginning, uh, if you don't have a mobile website, you are really risking a high bounce rate. Mobile websites are great sources for quick information formatted to the screen, quick loading to the customer's mobile device when they access it on the go. Uh, I state here, uh, if they load quickly, I'll mention that again. If we have a site that's heavy, uh, takes forever to load, a customer on the go is not going to spend time or effort going there. So number one priority for you is you should have a mobile website intact. And I've given here in the second slide here, mobile websites can, can be had from all sorts of different vendors in this industry. And I've listed lots of different design types. Uh, we have something from, from Golo Ford all the way on the left, which includes some icons as well as rows. University VW has more of a button approach. Pat Loeb takes a different angle as well. So there's all sorts of different routes to go here. But my personal suggestion is this needs to be a top priority. And the good news is, Many of you already have this in action. Right, and I, I just want to—I so was just going to say—I just want to point out, a mobile website isn't just a website that also shows up on your smartphone. It is a website specifically made for mobile devices. Right, Ben? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, absolutely. It's formatted it's a, a very component. yeah, formatted a very very certain it, way. <laughs> it's formatted a specific way. It's light, meaning it's quick loading, and I keep going back to that because customers on the go, the chances for us to get an action or a non-action really is, is, is rated in seconds for a customer that's mobile. Yeah, because so. think about it. They didn't even want to wait till they got home to do it on their laptop or their desktop computer. They wanted the answer right now, and they did it on their phone, so they obviously aren't going to wait around. <laughs> All good points. Let's move on to QR codes. QR codes are short for quick response codes. Uh, developed by a manufacturer in 1994 as part of an inventory system, QR codes are very simple. Uh, basically, we take our smartphone, the camera function of our smartphone, and we can hold it up 
and scanned these two-dimensional bar scan codes. You may have seen them in all sorts of different advertisements uh, around all sorts of different types of industry. Uh, let me explain what a QR code does. It's very simple. A QR code takes us, in most cases, to a URL destination. That's all it does, nothing more. Then why would I have a QR code when I can just type the URL into my mobile browser on my smartphone? Good question. Has to do with convenience. And the ability for us to get a customer to scan a QR code and move to our destination versus typing in a long URL can be the difference, like I said before, between an action and an inaction. So the first thing we covered for QR codes, why is convenience, the ability to scan and go. Secondly, QR codes can be placed on print media, and they can take us to a multimedia destination. Uh, a couple different dealerships I've seen do a great job of this. Scan the uh, Weber Chevrolet QR code, for example, and you're taken to a brief video describing Weber Chevrolet, their history, and why you should buy a vehicle for them. So the ability to scan on print and take to a multimedia destination. And then finally, QR codes are trackable and traceable. We can see when a QR was, code, uh, was scanned and how many times. OK, QR codes where? Where do we place them? Well, I've seen dealers place, place them uh, in their print and online advertising. Think banner ads online, mailers. Some dealers will put them in digital correspondence, think newsletters, or even the signature line for customer inquiries. These can be scanned on the screen just as well as they can be scanned in print. And then some dealerships are even putting them on the, the lot window stickers, the service lobby, or brochures, any place that's convenient for that customer on the, go, on the go to scan and be taken to a destination. Speaking of destination, a major overlooked part of QR codes is where we're taking the customer. Now, we know for sure that if a QR code is scanned, our customer is 100% of the time on a mobile device. They are not using a laptop. They are not using a desktop. They are using a smartphone. I can't tell you how many times I'll scan a QR code and I'm taken to a non-mobile optimized page that either doesn't load, loads incorrectly, or I can't even see the text on my screen. So pay attention. Make sure your destination is mobile formatted. Make sure it's quick loading. Next suggestion. Make sure that destination provides next step value. Let me give you an, uh, an example outside of our industry. Uh, a lot of times, wineries are placing QR codes on the bottles of wine. For those shoppers who visit a wine shop, they can scan that QR code, and they're taken to next step information, taken to a video on the winery, uh, taken to more information about the region. Uh, the ability for the customer to scan that QR code and get more information is something that we want to bring in the QR code form. And then finally, long-term relationship potential. I'm a big believer in QR codes mated with mobile apps, the ability for the customer to scan the QR code, get a mobile app, and create potentially a long-term relationship channel with them. OK, QR codes, like I talked about, they can be trackable and they can be traceable. For those of you that want to experiment a little bit with QR codes, it's very, very simple, and I'm giving you a completely free way to do it. Uh, QR code creators can be found simply by Googling QR code creator uh, on the web. And basically, all you need to do is you need to have your destination URL, where you're taking the customer in the end, and paste it into the QR code creator, and voila, you have a QR code that can be scanned. Now, my suggestion to add trackability and tracing into this equation is to use Bitly or a URL shortener like I've listed here on the left. Uh, essentially, Bitly gives us free link tracking. So, First step is to take our destination URL, bring it over to Bitly, paste it, get a shortened URL, then take that shortened URL and paste it into the QR code creator. That way we can come back to this Bitly analytics board and see how many times our QR code was scanned, when and where. Next, let's cover mobile apps. In this section, we'll cover mobile app data. We'll cover the value of home screen placement with mobile devices. We'll cover the long-term relationship potential that mobile apps possess. Then we'll talk about how do you promote a dealership mobile app, tracking mobile app effectiveness, app SEO quality, and how Google and Bing are starting to natively rank mobile apps. We'll talk about push notifications. And then finally, location targeting. 
First, let's jump into some mobile app data. This is going to be data that's compiled from the number one mobile apps analytics provider, Flurry, along with Census Bureau data, Comscore data, and other sources. First of all, mobile app users and their education level. We can see that on the right, the U.S. average to hold a bachelor degree or higher is 28%. On the left, the, on the, left, the average for the app user is a staggering 61%. In general, mobile app users are higher educated. Next, we'll talk about engagement. On the right, we can see through Comscore data that the average time spent on websites is just under one minute. Compare that with mobile apps. Over four times the time spent or four times the engagement. Mobile apps right now are an extremely sticky medium. Let's take a look at mobile app data in consumption. Minutes spent per day. On the left-hand side, uh, in green, under 2010, we can see web consumption. Now, this is minutes per day by the average user. In June 2010, web led the way at 64 minutes on average compared to mobile apps at 43. In December 2010, we can see in green, they get a little closer. The web at 70 minutes, mobile apps at 66 minutes. And then in June 2011, the switch occurred, where in average consumption per day, mobile apps actually beat out the web. Next, let's talk about the customer and their smartphone. Now, Eliana, there's a recent study which I thought was hilarious, and maybe some of the audience has heard this as well. Someone did a study, and they polled a certain number of random people, and they said, you can lose one thing, your wallet or your smartphone. Which one would you rather lose? And you can guess. From this, from this webinar, of course, that more people would rather lose their wallet than their smartphone. I would totally, 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 totally agree with that. <laughs> I should, I should have you can the replace, for that you can replace a wallet. You can, you can cancel all your credit cards. But man, you can. I, right. I mean, I have pictures of my son, you know, and videos and stuff that I don't have any place else. That oh, I can't lose my phone. I and can't. the crazy thing about the study is it was overwhelming. Your reaction, Eliana. It, was, it wasn't even close, was it? It wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. <laughs> it's, you know, it's something we just wouldn't have thought you know, X amount of years ago. But the point is more people would rather lose their wallet than their smartphone, a very, very personal device. And I think everyone on the webinar would agree. And so for this next poll, the audience, we're going to talk specifically about that. We're going to talk about smartphone usage. And for those of you in the audience that have a smartphone, Specifically, I want to pull the audience around how many times you view your smartphone home screen per day. And I'm going to turn it over to, to you, Eliana, in just a second. But before you answer this question, think about it. Do you use your smartphone as an alarm clock in the morning? That would be one time you look at it. Do you check the weather even before you get out of bed? That would be another time. How many times do you actually interact or look at your smartphone home screen per day? Eliana, go ahead and take it away. Well, you heard the man. I already have the question up for you, and some of you have already started voting, and we appreciate all of the interaction that you're, you're giving us during this webinar, of course. So the question posed before you is, do you have a smartphone? Well, how many times do you think you look at your, home, your phone home screen per day? How many times do you check it out? I, I have to say, if I, if I really thought about it, I'm pretty sure I'm over 100 times a day. <laughs> I don't I know, know if I, I should be embarrassed I, by that. I, 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 that. That's the question, right? So the, uh, notice I didn't put 150 or 200. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's funny because I heard of some, you know, with the flu season so bad this year, they kept saying, you know, the average person touches their face over 70 times a day. And I'm thinking, if I touch my face over 70 times a day, then I touch my phone double that. It must be. There's no way. There's no way around that. So we want to know what you think out there in webinar land. And so many of you have already voted. Thank you so much for getting involved. We do appreciate it. So are you ready for the results, Ben? I am ready. OK. Well, with almost everyone on the webinar voting, an overwhelming 49% of today's webinar attendees said, yup, more than 100 times per day. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> 
Wow. We got That's 20. Amazing. I know, I know. 20. And you know what? I know it says maybe 75 times per day, but I think you think it's 75 times a day, but it's really 100 times. <laughs> I want to admit it. I do but too. Yeah. A quarter of today's uh, webinar attendees, 24%, said maybe 75 times per day. 14% um, of today's audience said less than 25 times per day. You people are strong. Strong. 11% of today's audience said it's more like 50 times per day. And only a very small percentage, 3% of today's audience, said that they don't own a smartphone. And I'd like to right. add in. Yet. There you go. <laughs> go ahead, Elena. You want, you want to add in what? Yet. They don't have a smartphone yet. Uh, you're you're going to come over to yet. our side soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, with, that, with those numbers in tow, I mean, that's not surprising, but if you really think about it, and it's something that I never thought about until you really, you, you, you know, ponder it, we look at that smartphone home screen many, many times per day. So let's move on. I'm going to make a case for you where I think some of the most valuable marketing real estate today for us as marketers belongs right on the home screen of your smartphone. I'm not alone in this. I'm going to share some other companies who absolutely agree who are in the innovative mobile marketing space. So first of all, when we're on the topic of mobile apps, uh, Apple as well as Google as an install requirement, require that when a user installs an app, that icon, that app icon, exists and takes up real estate on the user's smartphone home screen. So this is something that's absolutely unique to mobile apps. With mobile websites and websites, there's always the ability for the user to shortcut and add that icon to the home screen. The problem is, the percentages aren't overwhelming for those that actually take the action. With a mobile app, this is a requirement upon install. Let's move to the next one. For me, I think successful innovative markers find, find ways to do multiple touches with their customer many times per day, reminding them constantly so that when the time for action happens, they think of our dealership. And the smartphone home screen, I can't think of a better value for the amount of times that we look at our home screen per day, 50, 75, 100, maybe even 150 times per day, to be able to have that dealership app icon right on the most personal device many of our customers have. Think of another uh, marketing initiative that you have that touches the customer that many times per day. Is it a billboard? Is it a newspaper? It, it's not even online banner ads that touch a customer that many times per day. And then finally, mobile convenience. The ability for the customer with one touch within seconds to launch your dealership mobile app and get to the number one category for them, inventory, 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 um, is tremendously valuable. Let me give you a cross-shopping example. We have a customer, let's say, who's shopping for a Chevrolet Sonic. Now, we're based out of Minneapolis, so let's say that customer is on the go and wants to start their shopping process, remember they're very early on. They're going to take their iPhone, for example, launch their Safari mobile browser, and do a Google search. And they're going to search Chevrolet Sonic Minneapolis. They're going to come up with maybe three different dealerships and visit three different dealer mobile sites and look through the inventory of those three different uh, Chevrolet mobile sites. Now, that customer's early on in the process, so they go on to something else, and then maybe a day or two later, they come back and say, hey, I want to continue my inventory search. Are they going to open up their Safari browser and look through their mobile browser history to figure out which Chevrolet dealers they visited a day or two ago? No, they're absolutely not. They're going to launch the browser, and they're going to start the search process all over again, typing Chevrolet Sonic Minneapolis into Google. So not only are we paying Google once again, for that same customer. But now we're also introducing additional competition. Perhaps our dealership is not on the list uh, when, when they shop the second time. Let me con contrast that with a mobile app install strategy. If we can get a mobile app install early in the process, we have, in effect, locked in that customer. Again, remember, they're looking at that home screen 50, 75, 100 times per day, and the ability for them to get to inventory within seconds 
in effect, locks them into our inventory early in the process. Now, don't just take my word for it. Uh, when you have some downtime, take your mobile device. Visit uh, USA Today. Visit uh, Zappos, the shoe company. Visit uh, eBay. And you'll notice that at the very first page, they'll go to great lengths to make sure that you download an app rather than going to the mobile website for one specific reason. They know that if they can get you to download that app, when you're in the mood for current events, when you're in the mood for shopping for shoes, et cetera, they have you locked in. The chances of you popping open their app and getting the sale increases tremendously. So think a little bit on smart smartphone home screen real estate marketing. I think it's one of those channels that's completely underutilized and has tremendous value today. Next, we'll talk a little bit about uh, mobile apps and their long-term value. Uh, mobile apps kind of have three stages in my mind. Mobile apps can function in the information stage just like a mobile website, the ability to do click to call, live chat, hours, and directions. Uh, mobile app can serve the customer when they're a little farther down the sales cycle. They want to search inventory. Perhaps it's a digital brochure. They want to view imagery, video, uh, uh, almost as if they were taking a digital brochure with them in their pocket. And then finally, a mobile app can serve as a post-sale tool. Uh, for those customers after they've purchased the vehicle to notify and schedule service, to use push notifications, which we'll get into in a bit, uh, the ability to, to reference coupons and specials, and then loyalty incentives. All of these different ways for us to retain the customer longer term and get them back to the showroom time after time. Okay, one of the biggest issues, I think, for a dealership or launching a mobile app is around mobile app promotion. Let me talk about the mobile app stores in the early days, 2007, the Apple iTunes App Store. Six months in, about 10,000 total apps existed. And you could, by leading a specific category, get users to search for your app by selecting a category and downloading your mobile app. You, if, for those of you that remember, I referenced how many individual apps are in the stores today. And just between Apple and Google, it's over 1 million. So if we think our customer is going to go to the App Store and search for our dealer app amongst all of the rest of the overcrowded apps in the store, we're kidding ourselves. It just does not happen. So as a dealership, we need to find innovative ways to get that app install into the user's phone. Number one way we've seen dealers have success is by using what's called app option code. App, app option code is simple. It identifies when our customer is visiting our .com, something we're promoting, uh, month over month and spending thousands of dollars to drive customers to, and it identifies the customers on an iPhone or an Android-based device. And it says, hey, we have an app available, would you like to download? And it gives the customer the option right there. Number one way we see dealers drive app installs. Number two is through post-sale install strategies. Some of the most effective dealers have their staff trained that when that customer rolls out of the showroom with that brand new car, uh, that salesperson or that service person says, you know, let's get an app installed on your smartphone. We got roadside assistance. We can schedule service. There's coupons and incentives that come this route. And with a staff that's trained, a post-sale install strategy can be an absolutely effective tool. QR codes. We talked about that earlier. Some of the most innovative dealers are simply placing QR codes around the dealership. A quick scan gets an app install. Another great way to drive traffic to the mobile app. And then finally, a lot of innovative dealers are on a regular basis promoting through social media channels. Basically, say, hey, we're mobile app friendly if you want to interface with us in that way. I said uh, mobile apps are trackable and traceable. Just like your website, you can track things such as downloads, new users, even retention. How long is the customer keeping the app? Time spent within the app, even the user's paths throughout the app. An example here, uh, we have active users charted. We have number of sessions or the number of times the app has been opened, the time average spent within the app. This next slide shows that each individual button push is actually tracked within the app. So with this particular customer, we can see this is a VW store. You can see the very first button, 64% of the time they go to, is the showroom. From there, the most popular car for this Audi dealership is the R8, followed by the A4. And we can track it from there. Did they go to the brochure? Did they go to inventory? There's all sorts of different tracking and tracing available. 
Next, let's talk about app search engine optimization. Very recently, uh, within the last six months, uh, Google has started to organically rank companies with mobile apps. And we started to see this with a few different dealers, even on first page search examples. Now, this will not show up on a search on a laptop or a desktop, and it makes sense. Google only has started to do this with those who are doing a Google search through a browser on a smartphone. And essentially, uh, what it looks like is, let's take a Jack, not Jack of Diamonds, let's take Weber Chevrolet example again, uh, the ability for maybe placement number three, four on an organic Google search based upon keyword search terms, one touch access to download and install the app, both for iOS devices as well as Android. Next, let's talk about uh, push notifications. And we're getting towards the end here. I really appreciate everybody's attention. Push notifications are an app-only communication tool directly to the customer. Um, this appears on the customer's phone much like an SMS or text message would. But I want to be clear, this is not an SMS or text message. So when the customer downloads and installs the app, they have effectively opt-in. When they launch the app, they can choose to opt in to push message notification. So therefore, we're not paying for every single message sent out. We're, we're not having to abide by text message or SMS rules. We're having to abide by mobile app rules. And the whole goal here with push notifications, if used effectively, is for them to be sent out sparingly. This is not an everyday message tool. This is maybe a once a month or once every two month mess message tool. But it's the ability for us to send a targeted message out to the entire installed base of mobile app users. Uh, we've got an example here for Pat Loeb Toyota. Appears on the customer's phone, says so schedule your vehicle service appointment now in three easy steps. If the customer decides to engage with that push notification, it automatically opens up the app and sends them right to the service scheduling tool where they can then complete it without ever calling the dealership. So really, it should be set up as a reminder or big offers, incentives, or big sales. That's really the best use from a best practices perspective for push notifications. OK, now we've got to our final poll the audience section. And in this one, Eliana, before I bring it over to you, um, I have a question based upon value. And it's a genuine question based upon value. And I'll let you take it away from here. Thank you so much, Ben. OK, audience, here we go. Question is up on the screen. So we want to know, how valuable would it be if you were able to send a coupon or an incentive to your buyer's phone when they're visiting a competing dealer? They're not at your store anymore. They went down the street to the other guy's store. And you want to maybe still grab their attention. On their, on their smartphone, which you know that they look at 100 times a day. So, um, so tell us, do you think it would have absolutely no value to you? Do you think it sounds interesting, but uh, maybe you're just not still sure? Do you think targeted messaging based on location? Yeah, I could see some value in that. Or, yep, I see high value in touching buyers while they shop, even if it's not at my store. So we want to know. The votes are coming in fast and furious. We do appreciate you getting involved, as always. So thank you so much. And I, uh, it's very interesting voting going on here, Ben. Can't wait to share it with you. <laughs> Good. That, that's what it's all about. And it, you know, again, I ask this question because we're starting to dip into to new technologies in the mobile front that we just didn't have the possibility to do before. And you know, maybe some have value, maybe, maybe some don't. And that's really where dealers get to help through feedback, tell us, you know, and other vendors in the industry what's what's valuable. So just before we answer this, is this like pie in the sky kind of stuff, or does this actually exist? This actually exists. No and way. It's, you know, it's it, it's really amazing. And before you can give the the results of this poll question, this is something that Apple pioneered, and we all have seen the commercials with Siri. Uh, the personal assistant, saying, right. Siri, hey, remind me when I get home to compile a grocery list. It will remind you based upon your location. So it's some of that technology that Apple's pioneered that we were able to use in the dealership realm. Unbelievable. Okay, well, are you ready for the results? I'm ready. All right, let's close this poll and share the results. 67% of today's audience said, yep. 
I see high value in touching buyers while they shop. 33% said targeted messaging based on location. Yeah, I can see some value in that. And we got no votes for the other two, the not sure and no value to me. So I think very overwhelmingly you can be very confident that dealers can see that, yeah, maybe that's something they should be looking into. Well, let's move on and let's talk about location targeting, which is specifically what the poll was designed to, uh, to, to move around. Location targeting, uh, again, using some of that Apple technology based upon location, allows us to identify up to five physical locations. And dealers have identified uh, everything from nearby auto repair shops. A lot of times it's a competing dealer that's in their area. And the way in which the system works is we're able to compose a targeted coupon or a targeted message that when that customer visits that competing dealer or that competing auto repair center, a message, coupon, or incentive is instantly sent to that customer's phone. So at no other time I, can I think of are we able to engage a customer right when they're in the mood or the process of purchasing or serving, servicing a vehicle. And again, this is a combination of Apple technology and some others who are, again, using the smartphone, the most personal device, uh, to identify a user's location and to incentivize them based upon that. Um, I'll move on to talk a little about location targeting example. Uh, just last week, uh, speaking with a dealer who decided to use this system for a best price match guarantee, for example, and would incentivize those who came in the store to not only match the vehicle price, but also give an additional $500 discount. And, you, you know, six people brought phones back to the dealer, which is great, uh, and then they sold four cars on Saturday, specifically based upon that location targeting. Now, I'm going to go back a slide, and I'm going to tell you my excitement around this type of feature. But here's the whole goal. What's exciting to me is that I think we're just scratching the surface of what we can do with mobile longer term. This certainly has tremendous value, and as technology improves around smartphones and as it becomes more and more personal, there's going to be more and even more innovative and exciting and even more truly valuable aspects that we can utilize as a dealer. So we've kind of come to the end here. I really appreciate your help. I'm going to recap real quickly. We covered mobile app data. We covered that home real estate placement and the value I think it, it really possesses. We covered long-term relationship potential of mobile apps, how to promote them effectively, tracking mobile apps, some of that organic SEO quality that apps are starting to possess with the major search engines covered that push notification section, and then we covered location targeting, the ability to send a, uh, an offer or a coupon to a customer based upon their location. So finishing up, I'm excited about, about, about mobile, and my hope is that today you're starting to see that I really think this is an undercrowded opportunity for your dealership to help you beat the competition, drive more sales and service business. Thanks again, really, for your time and your attention. Eliana, I'll pass it off to you. Oh, thank you so much. So, uh, Ben, I just want you to know we have some really, really, really great questions that came in from our audience members, which we will be getting to in just a moment. Before we get to that, I think we have some business to take care of, don't we, Ben? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes we do. Well, now's the time that we usually give away a prize. And so, here we are. If you were with us at the top of the show, then you heard me announce that our good friends at Automotion TV are giving away a new Apple TV with 1080p HD to one lucky attendee. This device lets you access the best content, blockbuster movies, TV shows, sports, your music, your photos, and so much more right on your widescreen TV. And you can even play content from your iOS devices on your TV using AirPlay. It's a $99 value, and all you have to do is answer a simple question about the presentation you just saw. Now, usually I tell you the question, and then I wait for you people to write in. But this week we're going to try something a little different. So I hope you'll bear with us, and I hope you find it fun. So in order to find the question, you have to click on the link that I'm about to send you. Now, I haven't sent it yet, but I'm about to send you a link. It'll come up in your chat feature, all right? Now, 
when I send you the link, you need to click on that link, go to the landing page, check out the question, come back in to the webinar, and type in your answer. And the first person to type in the correct response it's going to be walking away with this totally cool prize today. I wish I was eligible to win. So without further ado, let's get in front of our computer screens. Let's get in front of our keyboards. Get your mouse in your hand. I am going to send you the link right now. And of course, I wish everyone the very best of luck. Here we go. And by the way, I only know the answer. I, I, you have to go click on the link to know the question. So you got to go click on the link. Ready? Here we go. And there you have it. It should be in your chat window. So you need to click on that and go find the question and then come back and let me know the answer. Good luck everyone. So Ben, how you doing? <laughs> While we wait for people to go and <laughs> click on stuff. Ooh, guess what? The, the answers are already starting to come in. So exciting. Here we go. Okay. And oh, I am so impressed. We have a winner, and I am really impressed right. at how fast you people did this. I thought it was going to take a little longer than that. <laughs> smart audience. Very, very, very smart audience. Uh, the very, very first person who wrote in, and by the way, almost all of you had the correct answer, but the very first person to write in is Fallon Price. Fallon, congratulations. The correct answer was location targeting, and from what I understand, the question was, what mobile app feature sends a targeted message to the customer based on their location? Location targeting was indeed the correct answer. And thank you so ding, much, ding, everyone, ding. for playing along. I know we should have had like uh, Jeopardy music or something. So um, <laughs> one day I'm going to have the, you know game show music. I don't know when, but it's going to happen. So Fallon, write into us and let us know what dealership you're from, so we can give you a proper congratulations. Thank you, everyone, for playing along. I hope you found it fun. And uh, I think we're ready to start with some questions from the audience. Oh, Fallon is from Land Rover Flatirons in Superior, Colorado. Congratulations, Fallon. Great, great job. And I hope you enjoy your Apple TV product. I wish I was getting one, <clears throat> Ben. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. We have so many great questions, Ben. Are you ready for... for I'm the, ready. Okay, because the audience... they. They don't pull any punches. They ask some really, really tough questions. <laughs> okay. Let's start off with this one from Alex. He says, what's involved with getting an app up and running? That seems like a simple question. That one's easy. <laughs> okay, well, you say so. Good question around, <laughs> it's a good question around what's, what's the whole process. And, and the, the, the quick information on that is there's different routes a dealer can go. They can go to a web development shop and get a custom app created for them. Uh, there's vendors in the industry as well that will provide an app uh, that they can uh, put up for their dealership. And usually those vendors will also be the ones that will create it, submit it, and get it up in uh, the Android as well as the iTunes store for the dealership. And I'm talking specifically around a mobile app that's uh, custom dealer branded, uh, not a generic app, if you will. So uh, there's full service agencies as well as uh, something you can go about it yourself. And I, happy to answer more info on that uh, if needed. So, good question. Eliani is still there? Um, I'm sorry, I am here. I apologize. Alex, I hope that answered your question. Certainly, if you have a follow-up, please let us know. I'm looking forward to getting to this next question from Landy Joe. We actually have a lot of questions, Ben about QR codes that are going to be coming to you very shortly. Sure. The first one is from Landy, and uh, Landy Joe says, is there any future to QR codes? There's no set format or standard in America, unlike Japan or Europe. There's 2D QR and even digital watermarking. So what do you think is the future of QR Landy's codes? Landy's very perceptive, yeah. And what we have here is the case not too unsimilar versus the VHS beta war or the different uh, Blu-ray versus, I think it's Toshiba HD format war. In any 
you know, new emerging technology that's going to be hot, you're going to have different players who are going to try to win the battle. We have the same thing happening with, uh, you know, Apple and Google right now, trying to battle for mobile supremacy. So there is no standard format. You have Microsoft, I believe, with their Snap technology. You have QR, QR codes like I presented are probably the most common and, and probably the, the winners, if you will, right now. And so, no, we don't have a set format, and we may not. I don't think that should prevent you from choosing a side, quote unquote, or having both or two or three examples available and using QR codes. It will sort itself out, and my suggestion is to adopt once it's done. Well, there you go. Now, we have another question from Landy Joe later on, but Landy Joe, I hope that helped you out. I do want to get to another QR um, question from Brian O'Connor. He says, do QR codes need to be specific to Apple? or Android? Good question, Brian. No. The answer is no. QR codes um, are simply those two-dimensional bar scan codes. Like I said, all you need to do is uh, go search the web for a QR code creator. Now, what you need to have on your smartphone device, whether you have an Apple or you have a, an Android or a Blackberry or a Windows mobile device, is simply a QR code reader. Now, that's an app. That's a free app, and there's tons of them out there. So in some, some cases, some devices come with those QR code readers already installed. In other cases, you need to go to the App Store and download a QR code reader. But the actual code itself, the quick response code that you're going to be providing for the customer, that can be read by any one of those apps. Well, he already wrote in and said, cool. So, <laughs> Brian, I'm glad that helped you out. Um, Chip wanted me to, to say something. This, this came in early in your presentation, Ben, but um, you were giving some really, really great stats, let's say, about mobile auto buyers and how they use their phones specifically, how they browse and that kind of thing. So he said, mobile auto buyers use a web browser to conduct searches over dedicated apps 92% of the time. He says that comes from netsertive.com. So I think Chip is one of those people who absolutely agrees with you that, that mobile is definitely, it's, I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's pretty much a tidal wave that we all have to pay attention to. So Yeah, Eliana, Chip, I, I, I don't think I quite got the full question. Eliana, read it for me once more. Oh, uh, you know what? He said, he said that uh, mobile app users use uh, an app 92% of the time to even search the web. So, so, um, There's all sorts of different studies, and you can reference all sorts of different uh, places. There's a specific study that was done by Nielsen specifically to our industry around um, the, the number of times uh, customers use a mobile app in the shopping process versus a mobile website. And the mobile app, yes, is, is, is used quite a bit more in these studies. Let me um, suggest a reasoning behind that. Um, typically, a mobile app benefits from multiple uses because, as we talked about, it's so convenient. It's, it's located right on the desktop or the home screen of the user's smartphone. So in a lot of these studies, I think that sways it a little bit, where a customer is going back to that mobile app multiple times versus they maybe just visit the mobile website initially or, or a couple of times, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, it does. And Chip, that was good looking out. Thanks so much for for sending us that as well. Oh, and uh, Brian said that he did not say cool. He said cool beans. So, of course, I, I want to make sure I got his <laughs> quote better. correct. So, Brian, thank you for that. Different Brian had a different question, by the way. Um, Brian, Brian number two, says, what if your mobile site has a pop-up that asks them to save the mobile site to their home page? So, um, great question. All right, well, what, now, what can notice. we get to Ben? Ben, what, what can we sell to Brian? Let's, let's rephrase the question. What Brian's referring to is to say, yep, yeah, Ben, I get the fact that you want to have that icon on the home screen. I get the value there. But what if you have a mobile site, and every time they visit the mobile site, you have some type of pop-up that says, hey, make sure you save us to your home screen as a shortcut. And the answer is, if you really push that, Brian, I think you can get some of the same results. However, what we find is most of the time that's, it has to be more of an unintrusive pop-up. It has to be towards the bottom, if you will, and the customer needs to engage with it if they, if they truly want to. Uh, the stats bear it out that people tend to not 
do that. Uh, as convenient as that is, and as, as valuable it would be to us as marketers to have them do it, the, the point is we can't force them to. And the nice thing about an app is not only is it something that people are used to downloading, but if we can get them to go through that process, it's, it's a forced icon on that home screen. So to answer your question, I think you're on the right track. You could certainly push the uh, shortcuts more heavily, um, but an app uh, it, it basically um, makes sure that that icon rests there. Thank you, Ben. And thank you, Brian. Great question. Okay, we're back to Landy Joe, who wrote in, any thoughts on advertising through a mobile app network, i.e. iAd, JumpTap, etc.? Great questions, great questions. And I'm going to be the first to say there are so many other individuals that have so much better insight than I do on, on that. I think, you know, if I was more knowledgeable, that would be a part of this presentation, Landy Joe. And there certainly are individuals who are experts in that area. And I, and I think there's tremendous value. Uh, in advertising through those those venues. Now, for those of you that have a paid search campaign through Google, uh, you can you can experiment uh, at least through Google's property pretty simply and easily if you're already familiar with your Google Ads campaign. So that might be a place to sort of start. Um, and and really, the recommendation there is that you separate those campaigns out, make them absolutely distinctly separate, so you can really track the ROI on your mobile ad side versus your laptop and desktop. Thank you. Yeah, it was a really good question. Landy Joe has all the good questions. Actually, we have a lot of great questions from the audience today. Really insightful. And I want to thank you guys for getting involved. Next question comes to us from Mitch. Mitch says, if a dealer can get a potential customer to download our app, can we retarget them once they leave our dealer and go visit a competitor? Which, ironically, I think we talked about that, didn't we, Ben? Mitch is referring to retargeting. Mitch, I'm in love with remarketing and retargeting, you are on absolutely the right right track. Um, for those of you who are not doing retargeting or remarketing as a dealership, another, this is Ben's opinion, totally undercrowded, great ROI opportunity for you today. So Mitch, if I rephrase your question, it's around after we get them to download the app, can we remarket or retarget to them? Remarketing and retargeting has to rely on an ad, uh, an ad network if you will. Um, and the whole goal there is obviously a lot of times banner ads displayed uh, at various websites uh, specific to that user. Now, I would, there, is, there is no combination of remarketing and retargeting with a mobile app, if you will. But in effect, that's exactly what our goal is with the mobile app. Our goal is to place that icon in a convenient location so when that customer thinks about the shopping process, they pop that open and they have access to all sorts of aspects of our dealership, primarily inventory, but also, like I said, post-sale stuff. The goal is to get them back to that app multiple times. Sharp, sharp. Thank you so much, Ben. And Mitch, just so you know, we did actually do a webinar about uh, re uh, retargeting and remarketing, and uh, it was given by Duncan Scarry. And if you're interested in checking that out, you're more than welcome to do that. You can find it on dealeron.com slash webinars. And then click on the link for on-demand webinars. That's where we house all of our uh, recorded webinars from the past. And, and see if you can find the one for, for retargeting and remarketing from Duncan Scary. Thank you so much for a great question. OK, next one comes to us from Jason. He says, could you ask Ben, with regards to apps the manufacturers offer, i.e. OnStar or vehicle brand-specific apps, does he see higher usage rates among those apps or dealer-specific apps? What do you think, Ben? That's a really good question. Yeah, Jason, I like that question. Um, what, just to rephrase Jason's question, it's uh, um, there are manufacturer OEM-provided uh, apps. The General Motors has some. I think Toyota has some as well, OnStar, et cetera, some that are designed to work with different features of the vehicle, and I'm sure the audience is, is familiar with, with those. Um, Jason, they serve, in my mind, two very distinct different purposes. Um, at the OEM level, um, first of all, obviously they're generic and they're OEM specific. Um, and so if we're talking OnStar and stuff, typically that's a post-sale install after the customers purchase the vehicle and starts using it um, with the vehicle. Whereas kind of what I covered today was a dealer-specific mobile app dealing with the sales process as well as servicing the vehicle. 
And um, there are other mobile apps that um, everyone's familiar with, like cars.com or AutoTrader, right? The problem with those is, is we don't stand out as an individual dealer, right? They, it allows you to search every dealer's inventory, and we're fighting again just like we are on the web um, on Google search for, for, for people's attention. So a specific dealer-branded mobile app should be designed to, to highlight your dealer and create that long-term relationship channel and highlight your differences and your value. So hopefully that, that uh, I didn't answer Jason's question about usage rates because I'm not privy to the, um, the OEM's download rates and such. Um, at least we haven't done a study on it. So hopefully that helps somewhat, Jason, but good question. <laughs> Jason, thank you so much for that question. And I have to say, the question from the next guy, I, I had to do a double take because I thought it was from you, Ben, but his name is so close to yours. It's Ben Ammerman. So it's like really, really close to yours, Ben Anderson. But is he, this my doppelganger? <laughs> it might be. It might be. Okay, so Ben, here's a question from Ben. He says, what is a good entry-level cost for an app to include inventory link, watch videos on new and used, schedule service, and push notifications along with target marketing. What's a good cost? What is a good price? Yeah, good entry-level um, cost. I imagine well, they run it, the gamut. It, yeah, I, I think it's an interesting question. Uh, the, they, they run the gamut. I talked about it at the at the front that a dealership can go a variety of ways. They can get a fully custom-developed app from an agency or a development shop, if you will, that will be completely customized uh, specifically to their, their needs. Obviously, there's a timeline there of uh, depends on the complexity of probably six months to a year and, and quite a large expense up front. I mean, that can run, you know, uh, thirty to $40,000, if you will, and then there's requirements to update it and such. And then the gamut runs all the way at the bottom end, you know, to real, real templated cookie-cutter apps, if you will, that uh, can be purchased for, I'm not even sure, probably 50 to 100 bucks a month, if you will. Um, so I, I won't comment on, um, comment on that just in the, in the nature of being unbiased, if you will, but there's a variety of vendors out there that you can research and, and take a look at, you know, uh, what best fits what you want to do as a dealer. Um, and I guess from, from my perspective, there, there's certainly, I think, spending uh, an outlay of thirty to $40,000 without having an ROI present, especially if you're dipping your toe in the water and really experimenting with mobile, just doesn't make a lot of sense. The nice, the, but it, at the other end of the spectrum, if it's, if it's so generic and it doesn't represent your brand well, we have a problem uh, there as well. So I'll let the audience kind of do their due diligence on that. Interesting question. <laughs> thank you, Ben. And thank you, Ben. So, <laughs> okay, let's get to this uh, last question. Last question comes to us from Jason again. Jason. Thank you so much for your, for your questions and love that you got involved. Jason says, if a dealer has multiple locations, would you recommend multiple apps or could one app service both or numerous locations? Great question, Jason. Ben, what do you Great think? Great question. Yeah, but, you know, it depends upon what the marketing strategy of the dealer group or the individual dealerships is. Let me talk first about what, what I would call a dealer group app, if you will, a single app that services, let's say, 10, 15, or 20 different locations. Um, and, and again, if it's a top-down approach, we really want to put the, the group as the forefront and, and maybe have the stores uh, definitely that, that subcategory, maybe that's the right route to go. The advantage in having individual apps for every single store under the group in my opinion, is that each one of those stores is serving a different customer base. We have Lexus stores, we have Kia stores, right? Let's not lump that customer all into the same category. Because with each individual app, uh, if it's an individual app for the store, we can use push notification, location targeting, all individually for that particular customer base. Whereas if we group it in the large uh, dealer group app, it's kind of a one-size-fits-all. So hopefully that uh, helps out, Jason. Uh, that was a great question. So I guess it depends. It d does it kind of depends on the stores and how far away they are from each other too, wouldn't it? That's another one. Location, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And Ben, I gotta say, I'm a professional at this, and you give really good webinar. Good job, Ben. It was a fantastic presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Keep blushing. Because <laughs> I said you give good webinar. <laughs> 
<laughs> you do, you do. It was fantastic. And we really appreciate that you came on board and, and talked to the audience today about mobile. It's such an important subject, and I know our dealers today got a lot out of it. So, of course, we're at the very top of the hour. Any questions that weren't answered during the time allotted can be answered by email later today. Oh, go back one, Ben. Okay. Go back one, just for a second. So I want to remind the audience that we are going to send you a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording. It's going to be emailed to you in a few hours. And please use it for your reference, and please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And today's webinar is also going to be posted online. All you have to do is go to dealeron.com slash webinars and click on the on-demand link on the right-hand side. And there you can view our upcoming webinar schedule, and you can access any of our past webinars, too. Also, at the conclusion of the webinar, you're going to receive a short survey. So please fill it out, because we're always looking for really great feedback from our audience. And let Ben know what a great job he did today. And we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all the completed surveys to also win some Google swag, so another chance to win a cool prize. And of course, we really appreciate your feedback. Now, invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next webinar. Now you can go forward, Ben. <laughs> Where our expert from Google is going to help you connect with auto shoppers using the Google Display Network. So are you looking to improve your, improve your dealership's online pre presence? Well, who isn't? It's vitally important for your dealership to focus on proper exposure and differentiation and the Google Display Network is the perfect vehicle to help you generate online awareness by effectively connecting to shoppers during different stages of the purchasing cycle. Ohad Zur, Strategic Partner Manager on Google's Channel Sales Automotive Team, is going to explain the importance of display advertising for the automotive industry through the Google Display Network. He's also going to discuss various targeting options as well as 2013 display trends in the auto industry. So if you're looking for solutions to maximize your online exposure on Google, then this is definitely one webinar you just can't miss. This will be another fabulous presentation by your friends at DealerOn. And don't forget, DealerOn's weekly webinars are held every Thursday, 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. And we have some really great webinar subjects planned for this year. But if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics, feel free to contact me directly. Again, I'm Eliana Raggio. I love hearing from you. You can track me down online. I'm on all the automotive social networks. You can email me at eliana at dealeron.com. I'm even on LinkedIn. So thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today. And we hope to see you all on a future webinar in our continuing education series. Thank you all so very much, and have yourselves a great day.